Hello, everyone. I would like to welcome you to the Digital Teaching Symposium. If this is your first one today, I'm to introduce, my name is Lauren Little, I'm a Blackboard employee, and I'd like to introduce you to our colleagues from the University of Sheffield, Anne Bier, who is a university teacher in orthoptics, and Jesrin Clark Darrington. And I'm really excited to hear how the online student group work using the Blackboard groups. And so I'd like to hand it over to our colleagues from the University of Sheffield. Ladies, please. Thank you. Thank you. So I'd like to say thank you, first of all, for giving us the opportunity to show you today how we've managed to enhance online student group work experience using Blackboard groups. And as Laura just mentioned, my name is Anne Bierre. I am a university teacher in orthoptics. I'm also the program leader for the undergraduate orthoptics degree. Um, and we are sort of located within what's called the Health Sciences School at the University of Sheffield. Thanks, Anne. And I'm Jezreen Clark Darrington. So I'm the learning technologist and I work across the Health Sciences School, which includes orthoptics. So what we aim to show you today is how we moved from face-to-face uh, -face group work um, to online group work using Blackboard groups. And the reason why we moved on to using Blackboard groups um, was due to COVID. So we wanted to sort of show you how that actually worked uh, and how successful it was and how it also improved student engagement and actually enhanced the student's learning experience. So um, I'm the module lead uh, for the year two undergraduate orthoptic students medical ethics module and when I took on that module um, we were faced with some challenges and um, the students used to have to do a face-to-face -face group work activity which involved um, that they had to look at a, a clinical scenario that caused an ethical dilemma um, and what our challenge was um, was that the groups didn't actually work that well and not all the students contributed um, so we needed to really address that and I was quite keen on um, finding more innovative methods, but also considering our assessment, how we could make that, uh, you know, a bit different to just doing an assignment. And at the same time, I was quite keen on considering the students employability skills. How could we improve that um, by enhancing their digital literacy skills? So my thought was that perhaps we could use technology to improve the group work experience. Um, to do that, I sought help uh, from uh, the learning technologist and we decided for the group work, we wanted the students to create a Google site. Um, and at the same time, we also looked at the assessment for this module and we wanted to change it from an individual 1500 word assignment on a clinical scenario that posed an ethical di dilemma um, for the, a group assessment where the group had to be, develop a Google site for this ethical dilemma. So we set up uh, Google sites for each group and Jesrin will talk more about that a little bit later on but at the same time we also created a main um, course google site which included learning and teaching resources um, it was also a way for them to access their lectures and it also had information about the assessment and the group work expectations we decided it was important to give an introductory lecture um, on how to create and design Google Sites um, because we were aware that students may not have never actually had to create a, a Google website before. What we also wanted was to ensure that the student participated in the group work and really contributed. So we created um, 
a progress form, which was the Google form, where the students, after each group work session, um, we asked them to, to log what they had done. So basically, they had to say who participated, what had they done in the session, and what were their action plans before the next session. Okay, so in terms of the group work, what we did prior to COVID is that we had an initial group work session and that was led by the module lead, which was Ambier, and then I was also present. And we did this in a face-to-face -face context where we'd give them the introduction to the module, the assessment, and then I would go through with them on how to um, develop a Google site. And the reason we chose Google is because the university is, uh, has access to the whole suite of Google. So it was all part of the students' accounts and everything. And then what we did for the remaining group work sessions is we had a room that was booked for the students and then they could either choose to attend that room face-to-face -face and continue with their group work or we gave them the option to use another preferred method, which might have been an online method, or they could obviously meet face to face elsewhere. And then obviously the COVID pandemic happened and we all went into lockdown. So this is the point where we decided to move the whole thing online. So what we did is we ran the initial introductory session online using Blackboard Collaborate. So we did the same thing, giving them the introduction to the module and the assessment and how to use Google Sites. Um, but what we also did is I set groups up within the Blackboard course, so we split all the student groups up and then we gave them access to a whole array of Blackboard tools within each group. And one of these tools being that they could have their own collaborate room. So this was the idea was that then they could use their own room to sort of facilitate their own group work at times that suited them. And it also enabled me to create a group assignment so that it meant that only one member of each group had to submit on behalf of everybody else. So this slide here just illustrates what the uh, Blackboard group setup looks like in case you've never seen one before. So this was an example of group one and you'd see that they had the group members here at the top. And then further down, you could see that we had an array of um, group tools. So one of which being their own collaborate room, so they could sort of facilitate their own group work whenever. And then I also added file exchange so that they could share files that they might want to add to their Google site. I added a group discussion board so that they were able to facilitate asynchronous communication as well. Um, the group tasks was um, to allow them to project manage their group work actually and just sort of delegate or allocate tasks. And then I also added the email to make it easy for the groups to communicate in that way. And then you'll see further down at the bottom, there's a link there which took you to the um, groups as submission points so they could submit their Google site at the end. So for the ethics module, um... We normally do, we used to do a 1500 word assignment, um, but to change that, I researched the literature on how we could assess group work and also whether we should involve some peer assessment. And having read the, the literature, I basically decided it would be a good idea to involve peers in the assessment and give what we call a contribution score. So basically each member from the group um, had to give a score on their group members contribution but to ensure that that students actually were were happy with this uh, we did a consultation with both students from um, first, second and third year students from the undergraduate degree as well as staff and then we had this process approved at uh, the student staff committee. So just sort of uh, for you to maybe understand the assessment criteria, um, we had what we call component one, where two members of academic staff would assess the content and the layout of the Google site. And this would count for 90% of the assessment. And you can see the criteria that we were looking at, for example, have they included key messages, appropriate literature and reference style, as well as um, the scientific content. And all group members received the same mark for this component. Component two was the contribution score. So we asked 
each member of the group to allocate a contribution score um, for the other members of the group, but they were not allowed to um, actually mark themselves. And this would count for 10% of the assessment. And the contribution score criteria, you can see we've listed here. So three excellent contribution is really where the student had gone above and beyond in comparison to the rest of the group. Two is, is the kind of contribution we would expect from everyone. One meant they did not engage as well as, as, as the rest of the group members. And zero meant that they really hadn't even attended any group sessions. And a zero also meant that the student um, would be given a fail. But obviously, we would just double check with the rest of the group members whether we should actually fail that student. However, we've actually never had anyone given a score of zero so far. So I think um, it's, it's a real incentive to um, participate that we give this contribution score. OK, so this is just a few examples of some of the Google sites that the students created um, and they were given two ethical dilemmas. But as you can see from the examples here, that it was that everything that they created was quite different, both in terms of how the content was and in terms of the visual design as well. So it was a really nice assignment to give them opportunity to be a little bit more creative. And from a learning technologist point of view, following my initial introduction on how to create Google Sites, I had very little in terms of support needed from students. So that was a good plus on my side of things. Um, although we did have a few that had issues accessing the site, which was a simple fix of they hadn't logged into their university Google account prior to trying to access the site. But um, all the students found it really easy to use and they sort of enjoyed the creative element of that. To work out, you know, how, how successful and what the student felt about um, developing a Google site and using Blackboard groups, um, we asked the students from last academic year, which was when um, it was the COVID-19 lockdown and all learning and teaching um, was online. And we wanted to compare it with this um, academic year cohort so they've actually just completed uh, this assignment and just what's different to this year's cohort is that learning and teaching now is a blend of online and face-to-face -face, uh, teaching and they have the opportunity to meet each other face-to-face -face as well so here the first question we, we asked them was really um, whether they found our introductory lecture on how to use the Google site uh, or how to develop the Google site helpful. And you can see last year, 62% answered yes and 38% answered somewhat. And a comment from one of the students that, that actually gave the score somewhat, they said the session was very basic and in terms of being too slow. However, we felt it was important to, to start at a basic level because you deal with a diverse range of students and some have, you know, have very good digital literacy skills, whereas others are less familiar with Google Sites. And looking at this year's academic cohort, they actually all found the introductory lecture helpful. There are also um, other comments that they actually they said without the guidance lecture, the process of creating the Google site could have been much more difficult. And one student did comment they would have actually liked even more um, information, additional tutorial. But we've given them a lot of resources on how to do this. So we felt they needed to do some independent learning themselves and not just be completely spoon fed. We were particularly interested in, in the usage of the Blackboard groups, and we wanted to find out if we'd given them sufficient instructions. Um, and last year, 87% um, felt it was just right, although 13% said not enough, but they didn't comment why. And this year, um, they all felt that we actually provided sufficient instructions. And we also asked them if they found it easy to use the Blackboard groups. And 
the, the percentages are fairly similar between the two year cohorts. Um, it has to be said this academic year I did receive an email from one group that they had problems once um, logging on to the Blackboard groups. So that might be why the, the percentage of 20% um, or the percentage is slightly higher for this academic year. We encourage the students to use Blackboard groups to facilitate all their group work sessions, but we didn't say it was a must. And you can see uh, last academic year, none of the groups actually did use Blackboard groups for all the sessions, but 75% did use it for some of their group work sessions. Looking at this academic year, we can see a quite quite marked increase of 56 percent that now use the blackboard groups for all their group work sessions there were still some um, that only did it for some of them and they made comments that what they used instead uh, last academic year was they used whatsapp or they used the google suite like google meet or google docs to communicate Whereas this academic year, one group actually decided to meet face to face because they had a chance to do it. Um, and other groups either used WhatsApp, the Google Suite, and even one group used Microsoft Teams. We wanted to know by changing um, the assessment and also the group work, whether they felt they had learned more. So if they sort of have deeper learning by asking them to create a Google site instead of writing a 1500 word assignment. If we look at last year's academic cohort, we can see that the spread of yes, no different, and no is sort of fairly similar, whereas actually this academic year, uh, the majority felt they had learned more. Of those who said no, one comment was, I think I learned less because because I did not do all of the research, which suggests that that group just gave each other a task to do, and perhaps they didn't communicate as much as they should have done, or we would have hoped they would have done. Whereas the more of the students who said yes, um, they said it provided good teamwork and how to work well with peers. And there were also quite a lot of comments about the fact that you can have a discussion and you can share um, you know, your opinions, discuss opinions, approaches, help them consolidate their knowledge. Um, and also, it sort of maybe get them to think about um, other aspects they wouldn't have thought about otherwise. Group work, we know, it's not always a positive experience because not everyone contributing. So we wanted to find out if this progress form that we asked them to do would help them to keep on track. And last academic year, 75% said yes and 12.5% said somewhat. This academic year, um, only 56% said yes, but 33% did say somewhat. And if we look at the no's, they are actually similar between the two cohorts. There was only one comment, and it was that it helped to ensure what we had um, worked on was written down. But they felt it was a bit of a long process to have to fill in the forms. I did actually tell them specifically, just give me bullet points, don't make it you know, don't make it a, you know, a long process, but perhaps we do need to re-emphasize that again for the future. We wanted to make sure or find out if they felt that giving a contribution score made the assessment process more fair. And we can see we got very similar responses from the two um, years. And, and they sort of made comments about um, it made sure that everyone participated in the mark uh, making of the Google site. And there were several students that actually commented on, um, they felt that the contribution score was good, but that they would have liked a, a wider range of scores, perhaps to give a better spread out of marks between the group members. 
just at the end of our, our survey, we just asked them if they had any additional comments. Um, last year's cohort didn't have any comments, but for this year, you can see two very positive comments we received, such as it was a nice creative approach rather than writing an assignment. It's a bit tricky as we cannot see each other face to face all the time, but overall it was interesting and enjoyable. And one student said the Google site was very easy to work with, gave us a different way of learning, presenting our ideas, and it meant that everyone in the group had a job to do and could contribute. So in summary, we felt that um, the student feedback was really positive, actually, and it gave us a sense that the group work had generally worked really well and that we had given them sufficient instruction and guidance in terms of what they needed to do for the assessment. I think one of the things that surprised me particularly was that in this particular academic year, the use of Blackboard groups had increased which was quite surprising that there was only one group that chose to meet face to face, even though they could have. So it showed that it provided them with an effective way of meeting as a group. And, and the majority of students said that they found using Blackboard groups quite easy to use. And again, that they felt that using the Google site was a really nice way of presenting their ideas and their work and gave them an alternative way to um, for the assessment. And they found it really easy to use. And also, on the whole, they felt that the contribution score was a fair way to assess it, although they did suggest that bigger ranges might have been more useful. So just on reflection, um, Jessica and I have discussed, obviously, what the, the students' feedback we received, but also how, how well the teaching um, went. And on reflection, um, what went well? Well, the Google site and Blackboard groups has really proven to be effective online platforms for group work. And the development of the Google sites um, resulted in students reporting deeper learning. There was a good engagement um, and they felt it was more enjoyable than just writing another assignment. It's definitely developed the digital literacy skills, which will also mean it's enhanced their employability skills. And we believe that that student and staff consultation was, was really important in order for the students to feel it was a, a fair process. And including the contribution score um, does allow for a range of marks within a group. And um, I should just mention before we sort of um, asked them to just submit the Google site for us to assess, previously they had to do a presentation. And what we found was if they're asked to do a presentation, they're much more interested in, in if they can do the presentation well, rather than actually providing the scientific content. So asking them just to submit the Google site rather than presenting it, we've actually now um, found that they've really enhanced the scientific content, which is what we are looking for in year two. We have discussed, is there something we could do better? Well, we need to look at whether we need to widen the range of contribution scores. The students have, have um, only just recently submitted the Google site, so we are in the process of marking at the moment. So we are going to look at if we were to give a wider range, um, would we also get a wider range of marks within a group and would that seem more fair? So that is to be discussed. Um, we do feel that that the lectures as well as the group work actually work really well online. Um, so we are going to continue doing that. But we can still give the students the option of meeting face to face if they wish to do so. Then I think it's it's time for questions. And I think we've got a bit of we've got about 10 minutes for question time. And I know there's lots in the chat, so so Laura might have to help us a little bit because we've been focusing on 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 just um obviously presenting. So I don't know, Laura, if you want to direct us to maybe um, some themes. Yeah, um, got a couple of really good questions. Um, 
let's see, how did you decide on the percentage of contribution score? Okay. We, I looked at the literature, what had been given in the past, um, and originally we did talk about um, whether we should give it a 20%. But because this was quite a, a new approach, we decided to be a little bit conservative. Um, okay. So in terms of student not feeling it, you know, being unfair. And that's why we also went through that student staff consultation process. So we did actually discuss it, whether we should increase it. But having discussed it with the, the students and we really believe the student voice is important, there was a general agreement, let's be a little bit conservative and just give it the 10%. Um, and it's certainly, at this moment in time, we've not had complaints about that. Good, great. Did you find that the contribution scores were inflated? Um, the the, uh, the, um, the questioner asked, says that he finds many students have it to give peers perfect across the board when doing the peer assessments. Um, well, that's where the sort of training, where the introductory lecture plays a really important role. So in the introductory lecture, as well as talking about how to design the Google site, we also had a discussion about the assessment, um, that we would look at the scores they gave. And we also said, if everyone give each other three, we know this is not right. Um, and then we would go back to the group and discuss it. Um, so we haven't actually found that it was inflated, possibly because we discussed it with them beforehand. So, and also I have had where uh, students wanted to give a score of one, uh, they would actually contact me in advance, you know, when should I give a score of one? So by doing those sort of progress forms, um, we have found if there were any problems, they were addressed before they actually had to submit. So I have guided those who've been a little bit confused about giving the score. But this academic year, we didn't actually have any questions regarding that. And actually, um, on the, there was a question on the student, on the group progress forms. Um, what did you include on those? Um, on the progress forms, ooh, let's just, all, I, I'm wondering, Jessreen, if you could even find the progress form. I can if try. We, if we Let could stop share. sharing before I, uh, yeah, it would be lovely. And while you're <laughs> looking, another question was on the frequency. Was it just once the term or did you have multiple group projects in the term? Um, we just, for this module, we only had this particular group activity um, so this particular year cohort also have a different group activity but that's a formative assessment where they have to do a face-to-face -face group presentation okay. so this is the only summative group assessment we have for this year cohort that makes sense um, now, you may not be able to answer that, but would you recommend the group platform for a peer review writing workshop? Do you think that would work well? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think, I, I think it would be worth trying. I, 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 think, um, I think what's to be said about the Blackboard groups, they just found it so easy to do. Um, it's great to hear. And, and, um, and we've actually, for next week, we, our, our first year students are, are going to trial the Blackboard groups uh, for a completely different module. But again, that will be purely formative. Great. So Jessreen has kindly put up the um, ethics progress form. Jessreen, it's quite small for me, so you might have to just read out um, what That's questions you can be asked. Yeah, thank yeah. you. So in terms of the progress form, we asked them to select which group they were part of. And we only had, we had seven groups for this particular cohort. Okay. And then they were asked to explain what they had done so far, what they still needed to do 
and who will do these actions. And, and as Sam said, we basically asked for bullet points so it wasn't anything too onerous to submit. And there are only three questions and they could submit that. And it tended to be on a weekly basis after they'd had their sort of group work session. Okay. Was that a Google form? Yes, that's it is. Google I thought form. so. Okay, yeah, that was another question of the platform that you use. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so basically, I think it's fair to say we use the Google Suite and then we use Blackboard um, groups. Okay. Yeah. And um, did you have a resource that you used to for the instructions on creating the Google Sites? Um, a lot of it was done just as a lecture that we did at the beginning and okay. sort of created our own slides. But I did utilize videos off YouTube as well because they're already there. So it makes sense to sort of point the students in that direction. So yeah, we utilized that. Okay. Great. I'm looking back through the chat sessions and I think that that, are there any other questions that anyone would like to discuss? I think what I would be interested is hearing if anybody else has actually used Blackboard groups um, and, and what what your experience have been. Um, if, if anyone has, has had a go at it, it, it would be great to hear what your experience is with using it. I think from our sort of experience with all what we've done, you should always give a sort of introductory training lecture or training is really important and the first time they went out to groups both Jessrin and I were there and we sort of dipped in and out of the blackboard groups to make sure they were all managing okay so I think if, if it's something that anyone is interested in using you do need to do that facilitation and training um, and was this in a Blackboard original or ultra? It is, it's, I think it's original with the ultra experience, I think is the correct terminology that we're using. So we're sort of on the older platform, but it's got that ultra sort of okay. thing on it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's our base navigation, um, base navigation with original courses. Great. Thank yes. you. Yeah. Uh, I, can, I can see there's a question about the group size. Um, yes. So the orthoptic students are a relatively small cohort of students that are around 40. So we found each group had approximately six students, um, six to seven students within each group. But in actual fact, if you are using Blackboard groups, there's no reason why you couldn't do it for 100 students but you're just going to have to have more groups and obviously you might need in terms of the assessment um, you might want at the moment we are just two members of staff that are assessing these groups um, but but I can't see there should be a problem with with not doing it for a bigger um, cohort of students do we and there was a question was do we need blackboard collaborate to use groups and no if you're if you have another solution then you can then you can do a very a very um, similar thing with teams or um, zoom or whatever your vi your um, virtual classroom provider of choices Just see if there's anything else Okay, our, and there's a question, are Collaborate groups automatically created for each group that they can access without the instructor being present? I cannot remember if that is currently available or on the roadmap. Can you ladies help out? Yeah, so once you set the students up into a group, they can actually go into their own Collaborate room without any instructor. So that was one of the sort of bonuses that we liked about it really, that they can schedule that and it suited them and we didn't have to facilitate Great. that either. Great, thank you. All right, let me look back through the chat, see what else we have here. Um, yes, so I, yeah, I, I think it was just that the, there was just that one question, would the group platform in Blackboard be good for a peer review writing workshop? I think that the Blackboard um, groups or when you then go via Blackboard Collaborate will, will work very well um, for any workshop really. Mm -hmm. I think it would be as well, yeah. Um, 
and I'm saying that as a former um, as a former composition instructor. 